Hi everybody, I'm Mark Chaffordini with Big Fanboy and GoSeeTalk.com and we're here at Fantastic Fest and we're speaking to E.L. Katz, the director of the first segment in the ABCs of Death 2. E.L., thanks for being here. Oh, well thank you for having me. Um, you start off the, the, the series with a bang. I mean, you know, you got to have a real strong bookend and A is awesome. So, what made you come up with that? And uh, Well, like, I really love bad action movies. Uh, you know, I, I think... One of my first exposures to cinema was bad action films. You know, I used to watch them with my dad a lot. And, you know, it's kind of like, it is such a heightened version of reality where everything is possible if you're the hero. You know, they, they are kind of their own way, like superhero stories. And, like, I just, you know, my dad would sometimes talk about, like, oh, yeah, if I was in that situation, I could do this. So it's just like, in my mind, it's kind of like trying to jump into the mind of one of these unrealistic, you know, characters and, like, how he views the world then have him like suddenly come into contact with like reality mm -hmm. you know and just sort of uh i don't know i like the idea because like you know as a screenwriter you know one of the big jokes is like the air the ventilation shaft thing where it's like every problem can be solved if people crawl into the air shaft and like they can escape they can like perform a hit and i just thought it'd be funny to like show how lousy it would be if you actually crawled into one Mm -hmm. What would happen? Yeah, kind of reminds me of that scene in the Boondock Saints where he's like, "Name one thing you're gonna need your stupid fucking rope for." <laughs> um, uh, brevity. A lot of these sequences are, are kept to three minutes. So, what kind of struggles did you come to? Because you almost tell two stories in a yeah. way, and that's not giving anything away. But you know, what were your, your time constraints in telling almost two narratives? That was hard, and maybe you know, next time I would have constructed a story that maybe could have been resolved a little quicker. Uh, at first the cut was six minutes, no, the first, very first cut was seven, and I was like, oh man, I'm screwed, I'm gonna, this is gonna be really boring for people that have so many other shorts to watch. So that was always on my mind, that it was like, okay, like, and I still feel like maybe I went over, but, you know, it was, it's one of those things that you're very conscious that people have to stay engaged for a very long time, and especially if they're in the theater. I think it's really fun to watch this at home when you can kind of stop it, and like, Go get your Doritos or whatever and load your bong. But like, I think when because we're in Austin, because we're in Austin. <laughs> but it's like if you're, you know, if you're sitting there for like two hours watching all these shorts, it's just brutal. If you go for too long, you know, you're just being really mean to the audience and all the other filmmakers. So I tried really hard to keep it short, but yeah, just by nature of the structure of the story, it it has almost like two or three acts to it. So you know, it was just hard condensing that. I think. That's just the nature of it, though. You know, you have to find the ways to cut it. And I think I could have probably cut it a little bit more, but mm -hmm. I did my best. Well, we just spoke to Alejandro Bruges about his uh, segment, and he was saying that um, none of the directors talked to each other. This was like, yeah. the f when you saw it last night, it was the first time ever anybody saw it. So when you're coming up with your letters, um, th the whole series is either funny or horrific or really gross. Like, what direction? I mean, well, yours has some comedy to it, so... What made you want to do more comedy versus straight up horror or anything like that? I, you know, horror is is definitely something that I think is can be best in the long form. You know, I think, you know, a lot of that has to do with stakes and character investment. You know, and if you've spent an hour of somebody when things start to go really wrong for them, then you're kind of afraid. Mm -hmm. When you're doing it in the short form, it's just hard for me sometimes to wrap my head around how to make that scary but ultimately I think that's just my own shortcomings because I did see a couple of people really pull some creepy stuff really quick but I think just how I tend to approach it you know it just seems to me like you know if I'm doing something that's really quick it's sort of a gag so you know something that's funny something that's more ironic something that's more of a punchline and you know I, I think like with cheap thrills the feature I did before this you know it was funny but it also ultimately was like so serious so I kind of liked the idea of doing something that was a little bit ridiculous, like mm -hmm. from end to end, you know, just something that's a little different and goofy, you know. Well, you got A. Um, was there an option? Like, how did, how were you given that number, uh, that letter? They they just gave it to me. Okay. Like, I didn't I didn't uh, request any letter. I just was like, you know, whatever. You surprise me, and that'll be more fun to kind of come up with what I'm gonna do, you know, because that that sort of thing is like a nice surprise, and then it's like, all right, now I got to figure it out. But when they gave me A, I was kind of like, oh no, like now I'm going to, I don't, I don't want to screw this up for everybody. And like, I'm the first one. And if it really sucks, it's like people are going to tune out. So it took me months to kind of figure out what would be the idea to do, because I was just like, this is, this is some responsibility. And like, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of fucked me up because I was just like, oh, I got to really 
I got to really be smart here and find like a great idea. And like, you know, it took me a long time. And I think it was only when I kind of was like, all right, I just can't pressure myself about this. I have to think about it self-contained and not think about it as the beginning of an entire movie. And that was when I was able to relax and just come up with something goofy that amused me, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, Tim League was very passionate about this, um, and he reached out to a number of directors to get this started. It seemed like there were some things that were consistent. I don't know if it bookended the, the segments together, but it seemed like they either started dark and kind of came out of a hole, or at the end of it they went into a hole. Did you have any sort of like... Yeah, that did was you some sort of a style, you know, there's definitely a style guide in terms of like at least how to begin and end your short. Okay. Because I think... You know, they wanted there to be beginnings and endings, so it didn't just feel like really jarring and mm -hmm. kind of choppy. Gotcha. So I, you know, I, I think that makes sense from like a a transition perspective. You know, well, um, when you start off the series with a bang, I mean, it's it it stuck with me until about F or G before I started to pay attention to the rest of them. I mean, really not discrediting the other filmmakers, but um, you did a great job. What were some of the ones that impressed you when you saw it all together in the the uh, what do you what do you call this? Like, conglomerate I don't know what you call this <laughs> a legion of shorts uh, I really did I really like Zygote I thought that that was was really really <laughs> interesting really cool and like disgusting and sad uh, I thought the I thought the one with uh, the toy dimension uh -huh. was the amazing wish or, yeah yeah that, the, was great. that was really cool like when they you know when they have like it's like the masters of the universe <laughs> but it's like horrible uh, yeah. I thought that was great uh, <laughs> There's a lot of really cool ones. I like the what was the one the claymation one was really cool. There's so many. It was this was like a pretty fun, diverse project. It was mm -hmm. like it, it was like a short film festival. You know, that's what it felt like to me. What kind of expectations did you have going in? You know, um, the first one sort of set the bar, and it was really a a great undertaking. But um, I, I guess in addition to that, how long did it take to get everybody together and you know from start to finish when you got uh, situated with the the project, so I was told that I was gonna, I was I was told that I was gonna do it. I was pretty much asked if I wanted to do it. Um, not this South by, but last South by, uh, when I premiered Cheap Thrills, and that's when I talked to Timpson and Tim League about doing one. And um, it took a long time, you know. I can't. I I wasn't able to watch everybody else putting their stuff together, but you know, we were told that we should be done by January. And it was like way after that. So, you know, it takes forever. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do this stuff, especially when you can't really pay everybody, you know, and you have to sort of pull favors. It's just like it's a very long process because, you know, people don't have any incentive to work that fast or mm -hmm. to do what you need because they're not getting paid, you know, so you're kind of going on their clock. Gotcha. Well, it's pretty exciting to watch just because they all come together, as, as Yale said, with a, a certain dynamic that starts and stops it. But, um, you know, you you set the bar high, and I think oh, it was real yeah. real difficult to beat. So thanks very Thank much you for so your time. Much, dude. Seriously.